You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present The Late Night Call by John Fryer with Emma Hansel. Dan Carroll Corley and Robin Ingram as the man. Yes? Is that Victoria Mansfield? Who's this? I believe you're interested in some very strange subjects. Strange subjects? Who is this again? Is that correct? What sort of strange subjects? Subjects best kept to oneself. I'm going to hang up. You've been reading some rather peculiar things recently. Well, the internet is full of peculiar things. So are bookshops. Been checking my spending habits. What do you think loyalty cards are for? Collecting points. Do I have your attention? You're starting to. You've recently been inquiring about a great many documents. I believe you've sent out requests under the Freedom of Information Act. Are you from some government department? Some of those requests had to be turned down, I'm afraid. Sometimes no documents exist, or should I say the documents themselves no longer exist. Maybe they were never written, or could never have been proved to have been written. Have we met? I can't place your voice. How is your research going, by the way? From what I've read, you do seem very well informed. My research? On your computer. Are you with a private company? If you're calling me at... What is the time? It's quite early, your time. Three in the morning. Well, the time is relative. Not to me. I have to get up for work in a few hours. Yes. Curious, your form of employment. Oh, why? You spend your time in a... As you refer to them, a boutique... The manager calls it a boutique. I call it what it is. A shop. Giant steps for humankind. People have to have shoes on their feet. How small it must seem to you. Such activity will progress you nowhere. Fulfilment will never come from such an enterprise. It pays the bills. Then you must complete your function. Your productivity, I believe it is referred to. I needed a job. It was going. I got it. End of story. Not everyone is going to be captain of the ship. It's a shoe shop. What do you want me to say? Yes. But in your own time, you do other things. Don't we all? You clearly have an inquisitive mind, Miss Mansfield. How do you know I'm not married? I'm sure that will be rectified with time. Are you? How would you know? I must say that when considering your daytime occupation, your nocturnal endeavours have left us somewhat intrigued. Who's we? Put simply, Miss Mansfield, we did not consider you to be the sort of person that would take such an interest. What's your name? Surely that's the least interesting thing about me. How would I know? I would have thought the question you are about to ask is how I know so much about you. Is that not much more interesting? What do you know about me? How do I know you know anything about me? You could be just some some fool that likes to ring people up at three in the morning. If I said I knew your blood type, would that make the point? What makes you think I know my own blood type? Who are you? You placed a request with the Ministry of Defence going back to November 1952. Does that now sound familiar? How do you know about that request? You have also inquired of the American authorities a similar request for information about tests in Germany, Rugen Island off the Baltic coast in 1944, and Ordruf in the province of Thuringia in 1945. On the back of those dates, a meeting took place on a remote island off the coast of Scotland in November 1952. It is that meeting I wish to speak to you about. Have you mentioned any of this 
to any of those you are employed with? You tell me. You seem to have all of the answers. You have chosen not to elaborate any of your research with those you spend the daylight hours with. Have you got into my computer? What are you, GCHQ or NSA, outside contractor? What? We know what you have already written. You got past the firewall? That was not difficult. Would be for me. Yes. So what else do you know? You have been researching a high-level meeting involving your Ministry of Defence and your government of that time. Strange turn of phrase. Oh? Your government? Is it not yours as well? No, most definitely not. Was this at an Air Force base? You know it wasn't. Then where? An old deserted farmhouse. The meeting took place on a cold November morning. I heard they arrived by helicopter. No. They arrived by boat, which I know your research has already established. Who are you? Tell me. I am only a messenger. We have looked at you for some time. We think you may be ready. Ready for what? The Freedom of Information Act request will profit you little. You will learn nothing from it, and the request will leave you no better informed than you are right now. You are telling me that just such a meeting did take place? This will be your only chance to learn of such a meeting, and what took place during it. Right. Hold on. Do not connect your recording device to this system. If we detect that you have, I shall hang up. You need only listen. And remember. I still can't see the boat clearly, even from here. Only because the moon has gone behind the clouds. If it doesn't come out, we'll be searching all over the beach trying to find it. I'm sure we'll be all right, Ruth. The storm isn't meant to hit this island for a couple of hours. You'll be far away by then. I still don't understand why we have to come all this way. We could have held the meeting in London, with a fire and warm clothes. Yes, Ruth, I'm certain we could have, but it's all a bit sensitive, I'm afraid. This isn't the type of meeting to be held in the full glare of Whitehall. But, George, I still don't understand exactly why we had to travel up from London to do this. Hey, didn't they ask you if you were ready for something more exciting in your life? Mrs Simpson asked for volunteers from the Titan Pool. What did they tell you? A secretary was required. Shorthand a necessity. Did they say anything else? The successful candidate must be young and vivacious. I am joking, George. They did not tell us anything else. But you still volunteered. It's a weekend away from the office. I've got paper and a pencil and a packed lunch. Do I need anything else? I heard you had a sense of humour. I would have to to agree to this. Why did we have to come ashore in just that small rowing boat? Weren't frightened, were you? I thought we might capsize. There must have been an easier way onto this island. What did you call it again? It is called Herta. It is part of the St Kilda Archipelago. This is Village Bay. What village? I cannot see any lights anywhere. Do they think the war is still on? No. The last of the inhabitants were evacuated in 1930. We are quite alone. And it is quite unpleasant. Just be glad that we will miss the storm that's coming. How long is this meeting meant to last for? Not long. An hour. Maybe more. Are we meeting here on this beach? It's freezing. No, there's a farmhouse not far from here. Not far? How far is not far? About two miles. I just wanted to make sure that the boat was hidden. In the shadows. Who are you expecting to see it from out here? Even on the beach it can't be seen. There are more places to see the boat than from the land roof. Or even from the water. Very cryptic. So where is this house before we die of cold? Come on, I'll show you. The British Secret Service had already started to receive some reports from operational pilots during the First World War. So you have researched the subject, Miss Mansfield? I've tried. The Royal Flying Corps had already received reports of aerial phenomena. I believe so. The British War Office thought these sightings of lights in the sky might be some sort of sophisticated signal system at the coast for coordination of Zeppelin airship attacks. 
This is why the government of the time decided to clamp down on what it thought were fake reports of phantom craft in the skies over the UK. But both the Royal Flying Corps and the Royal Naval Air Service had also been receiving similar reports by their fighter pilots. However, and here's the interesting bit, during this time, uh, 1916 if I remember, the Early Military Intelligence Division 5, MI5 today, issued a circular claiming that they had established that almost 90% of what was then called phenomena had been dealt with and that everything was fine. There was no evidence that such enemy craft had ever existed. But what I find really fascinating is that the military authorities at the time decided to impose heavy penalties on anyone reporting any such stories of lights in the sky or strange aircraft or aerial sightings of any sort. These restrictions were brought in under the Defence of the Realm regulations. Sorry, I got caught up with it all. It's not been something I felt I could talk to people about at work. Hello? Are you still there? I am, yes. For a lot of people, it's a subject you have to be very careful about mentioning. So the authorities feared what? I believe they did not wish to create panic. They didn't want people to become suspicious. You mean they did not wish the population to realise that your government did not control the skies? I can see the logic of such a decision. Defend the people by lying to them. Hasn't it been done before? And many times since. So, if the lie is the defence, what is the truth? Your enemy. It's not a Russian. A Russian? No, it's not a Russian. Keep up. You're walking too fast. The weather forecast was for rain. I can't see any cloud. In fact, it's a very nice night. In London, we could only see the stars during the blackout. Well, you can see them tonight. I know. There's the Plough, Polaris, the Great Bear, Cassiopeia. You're interested in the sky? Only with what I can see up there. During the bombings, we looked for German planes. That was so we could stay alive. Now we just look at the stars. I often wonder if there is anyone out there. In the sky? The stars. Looking down on us. I wonder what they would see. The stars are just like our sun. Too hot for anything to live in. We do not live in the sun, George. We live on a planet that orbits it. What are you trying to say? If we live around a star, then is it not possible that there are planets going round to some of those stars up there? Would you not say? I did not know that you were such a deep thinker. Now you are ridiculing me. Not at all, Ruth. For all I know, you might be right. Someone. Not like us, I suppose. But people of a sort that are also wondering what is out there to be discovered. Someone who just wants to hold out their hand and... Say hello. Is it so crazy an idea? People who have also struggled to reach this stage without... without harming themselves or others. People who may have discovered a way to live in peace. To settle their differences without violence. Does that not give you some hope that we will not repeat the same mistakes from the past? I suppose that sounds stupid to someone like you. Someone like me? You and your world of Whitehall secrets. You think we only have secrets in Whitehall? Then you think I'm wrong. I think you are too deep for the likes of me, Ruth. Right. Come on, we've still got another mile to go. So is it a Russian, I said? No, we're not meeting a Russian. Is it from the other side of the curtain? That's what Mr. Churchill called it. Who told you it was a he? No one. I just assumed it was. You assumed wrong. We've got to keep going. So it's a woman, then? You ask a lot of questions. You don't answer many of them. I answer the ones I can. Which one was that? You're a funny girl, Ruth. What happened to your sense of adventure? I joined the civil service. Have you signed the Official Secrets Act? Haven't you? Which department in Whitehall are you with? It wasn't explained to me before I left London. Nothing very important. You're quite the man of mystery. I assure you I'm not. You knew I was from the pool, didn't you? It was just a guess. You could have been from any department. Did you know it would be me? How would I know that? I don't know. They asked for volunteers. Then how would I know it was going to be you? Why would someone build a house all the way out here? Maybe they just wanted some solitude. What's this place like? I've never been here before. Then how do you know where you are going? 
By the stars, Ruth. I am navigating by the stars. What are you saying? I flew over it this afternoon. You could have landed. It was a jet, not a helicopter. Why am I here? They were looking for volunteers, remember? You know what I mean. Whitehall needs a record of this meeting. When it's over, you are to type up your notes and give all the paper to me. I'll be taking it back to the correct authorities. Right. And who would that be? You're starting to ask a lot of questions again, Ruth.